Networks. Hey, 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 everybody, everybody, we're rocking and rolling right now on a Wednesday, hottest show on the streets, we're talking your Bama football news, in my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of TDA, coming to you from the home location on a Wednesday, got a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss here on the show, you got Alabama football players and coach is excited about Nate Oates and Alabama men's basketball in the Final Four. That matchup will take place Saturday between Bama and UConn in Phoenix. It's going to be a fun matchup, exciting matchup right there. One Bama player in particular, Deontay Lawson, has the Crimson Tide beating UConn by five. He told me today that he says free throws will be the key to the game for Alabama. So Deontay Lawson, given his score prediction for Bama men's basketball against UConn here coming up this weekend. But as always, we want you to get rowdy in the comment section tonight. 
hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, be a part of the number one show, giving you your Alabama football news right here in my own words. George truly, Stephen M. Smith here. That daily super chat go $100. Daily super chat go 100 bucks right there. We appreciate that from all of you. Got a chance today to speak to the defensive assistant coaches for Alabama, Coach Kane Womack, Coach Maurice Linguist, and also a few players defensively as well prior to jumping on here with you, the Alabama fans here on this evening. And we get some of your comments to start the show as we're getting this thing uh, rocked in here. We got uh, Hell Baby TV with the elephant right there. Appreciate Hell Baby TV helping us out here on the show, getting us started. We got Roll Tide and Rise Up with the elephant right there. Give us the Roll Tide. Appreciate Roll Tide and Rise Up helping us out right there. We got Nona Davis with the Roll Tide. Roll Bama girl in Cali. She's helping us out there in California, showing us love here on the channel. You guys continue getting your thoughts in, getting your comments in here on the show. Happen to have all of you guys checking us out on today. But we're going to start topic number one of the conversation off real smoothly here, and that's the competition. There is good competition between the offense and the defense for Alabama in spring football. The competition has been great. I got a chance to speak with Jaleel Hurley, former five-star in the 2023 class, cornerback from Florence High School, Florence, Alabama, the North Alabama region there. And so he's a redshirt freshman. Jaleel Hurley talked about on Monday, the offense got the better of the defense in practice. He said verbatim, look, they cooked us. All the quarterbacks cooked us. uh, Jalen Miro cooked us. Ty Simpson, Dylan Larnigan, Austin Mack, all the quarterbacks, they were dotting balls. They were dotting it to wide receivers. Wide receivers were just making crazy catches. They shredded us on Monday. We got cooked. And so the question asked back to him was, so how did the defense respond today? How did the defense back, bounce back today? Jaleel looked at us with a devilish grin on his face. He said, look, uh, that offense, they didn't, uh, they didn't have an answer for us today. They couldn't do anything with us today. Like t- today, you know, we shut them guys down. There were about 10 periods where they couldn't catch the ball, 10 periods where where they couldn't make a play. And he said, I got to give a defensive front. I got to credit our defensive ends, defensive tackles, our linebackers. They were flying everywhere. They were shutting things down, helping us as DBs out there. So of a defense today, we bounced back. The defense today, we made sure that they didn't get nothing on us today. So that tells you the competition on both sides of the ball, strong. Offense did their thing Monday. No offense did some really big things in the first scrimmage there over the weekend. Uh, Well, this past Thursday, the offense did, did their thing. This time around, the defense stepped up. This time around, the defense made some serious plays. This time around, the defense answered the bell there in terms of responding to the competition and the challenge shown by the offense. This is what you want. This is what you want from an Alabama football team. You want iron sharpening iron. You want both sides of the ball showing you what they got. You want one day the offense is able to do some things to manipulate the defense. The very next day, the defense goes, "Uh uh-uh. I'm shutting you down this time around. That's what you want to see on the field. That's what we got today. Seeing the defense here step up, defensive line making plays, linebackers making plays, defensive secondary holding its part, doing its responsibility as well. So it was great to hear that from uh, Jaleel Hurley. And it's been great to, to kind of see you know, this defense take on the moniker of not just Kane Womack as the defensive coordinator, but every position coach on the staff. This defense taking on the mindset of Coach Molin Gwist, working with cornerbacks. Uh, Jaleel Hurley spoke on specifically that Coach Mo he has these guys watching film of NFL players. He's got these guys watching film of NFL corners. Hurley mentioned that this is the first time he's ever just strategically watched film of guys in the NFL at his position. Guys like Patrick Sertan, you know, among others, doing exceptional things 
you know, a cornerback. So, you know, Coach Mo, he's technically sound in terms of he wants your eyes in the right place, your feet in the right place, your hips in the right place, your hands in the right place, your technique in the right place, your discipline. He wants all of those things, all of those aspects in the right place. And when you have a coach that's breaking it down to you like that, you have more of a respect for that guy because he's showing you the right way of how to do things at that position. So to have Coach Mo doing it that way, to have Coach uh, Colin Hitzler coaching the safeties the right way, got a chance to speak with Damon Payne on the defensive line. He talks about how the players love Jamie Mosley, former Alabama linebacker, former national champion. He's now working as a graduate assistant on staff, you know, helping out Freddie Roach with the defensive lineman. And Damon Payne talked about, man, we love J-Mo. We love Coach Flame, man. He out there with us. It's like he want to go out there and knock a quarterback out himself. It's like he want to go out there and be in them trenches right there with us. So we, we, we pick up what he put down. We understand what he is saying. We are taking in what he is teaching. So the defense and offense, both sides – competing both sides giving their all both sides want to kind of one up each other outdo each other and, and that's what's going to take here guys for Alabama to get back to being national champions for Alabama to get back to being feared being revered being respected you have to have that firm solid good competition on both sides of the ball and right now, just hearing Jaleel Hurley talk about that uh, today in player interviews, coaches interviews from a defensive perspective, that's what I gained, uh, that's what I gleaned, uh, that's exciting, uh, that's awesome, that's what we want to take from Alabama football practice. But we're going to go to our first quick break here on the show. Don't touch that down, we're just getting you started here on a Wednesday. When we get back, we're going to jump into the comment section. We're going to get your thoughts, get your conversations, hear what you have to say. Quick question to, to you, the fans. How much do you think Bama beats UConn by in the Final Four? Do you feel like Bama beats UConn? And if you think Bama beats Connecticut, how much do you think it wins by? We'll get that and more on the, other, on the other side of the break. But right now, we get a word from our partners at our our guys, Alumni Hall, Midtown Village. Check them out. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah, this. Oh, man. Gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that bam without this shirt right here, fresh polo. You gotta also rock the all pink, like Kanye West right there. Keychains, gotta get you some keychains. University of Alabama keychains. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts, shoes, sweatshirts, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game, you come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall. Alumni Hall, baby, right there in Midtown Village in Tuscaloosa, our partners with Touchdown Alabama. Magazine, you get there at Alumni Hall, you get your keychains, your hat, your gear, your swag, get all of your stuff prepared for the A-Day game coming up here this month in uh, 10 days. In 10 days, April 13th, Saturday, 3 p.m. Central Time from Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. ESPN has to call on the A-Day game. Get there, Alumni Hall to get all of your gear. I know I got a thought here in the chat line from Road Tide and Rise Up asking, when is the second scrimmage? The second scrimmage, my guy, is on Saturday, April 6th. So this Saturday is the second scrimmage here, or it's scheduled to be the second scrimmage according to the practice schedule I have. So Saturday, uh, this upcoming Saturday right here, 
according to the practice schedule I have. No thing. Now things are subject to change. Things are tentative to change. But according to the practice schedule right in front of me, uh, the second scrimmage for Alabama projected for this upcoming Saturday. So there is that right there. We got uh, Hell Baby TV right in. Everyone comes back except Malachi next year. That is correct. Malachi Moore is the only one that would pursue the NFL draft. Everybody else comes back. Now, Keon Saab, depending on what type of season he has to transfer from Michigan, Keon Saab could go after this upcoming season right here, depending upon what type of a year he has. But as of right now, you look at the number one guy that's going to go to the draft after this upcoming season, it would be most definitely Malachi Moore. But we go to Andre Baraka, who writes in three points. He's got Bama beating UConn by three. So that, that's going to be a big game right there, folks. Bama takes on UConn Saturday in the Final Four in uh, Phoenix. Check that out right there. Bama, UConn, Final Four. Rotad and Rise Up has Bama beating UConn by two points. So the number's dwindling here. Andre Baraka's got Bama winning by three points. Road tied and rise up, Bama winning by two points. Steven Scuba writes in, Devontae might transfer. I don't think Devontae Smith. Now, if Keon Saba wins uh, the starting job at free safety across from Malachi Moore, Devontae Smith could still win the starting job at Husky in a nickel package. He can still win the starting job as that nickel corner, that Husky spot right there. Smitty can still win that. And Kane Womack talked about how Smitty's size, his physicality, his toughness, his body structure, his coverage ability, he has the skill set that Kane Womack wants at the Husky position because that spot is required to do a lot of things in the secondary. So uh, Smitty right now ahead, in my opinion, in the lead, in my opinion, at that Husky spot. Now, yes, Red Morgan is, 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 is coming. Yes, Red Morgan battling. Yes, Red Morgan, the freshman, competing. Absolutely. But Devontae Smith, if I could call it right now, the leader in the clubhouse at this point for that Husky position in that defensive secondary. So I don't see Smitty transferring as of yet, as of right now. But you guys continue. Get your thoughts here in the chat line. Hit the like button. Smash the like button. Give us that thumbs up here on the show. Hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the number one uh, atmosphere here. Talking Bama football. But daily super chat go $100. Daily super chat go 100 bucks right there. We appreciate that coming from all of you. Uh, Steven Scuba writes back in. Hopefully he doesn't. I don't see him Scuba transferring. I, I don't see it. I don't see Sp Smitty transferring. I think he takes the spot at Husky as the starter. I think behind him would be Red Morgan, and I think Smitty will teach Red. He'll groom Red. He'll prepare Red, and then depending on the type of year that Smitty has, you know, he has a monster year. He can go to the NFL draft for 2025, and then Red Morgan can just slide on in as the starting Husky guy in next in the 2025 season, you know, campaign. So I don't see Devontae Smith transferring. Don't see it happening. So hopefully, you know, that young man definitely sticks around, especially after the spring, and becomes that starter there at the Husky position here for your Alabama football program. But you guys continue getting your thoughts in on uh, the competition that you see on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, how you like it, how do you feel about it. Also get your thoughts in score predictions for Bama and UConn. Deontay Lawson, Alabama linebacker, he's got Bama beating UConn by five. He says free throws will be the key to the game, but U.S. Bama Nation. U.S. Crimson Tide fans, how do you see this one uh, shaping out here? If you see Alabama winning this game, by how much do you feel like the Crimson Tide will take down UConn in this matchup here on Saturday? 
when you talk about the Final Four. Definitely want your thoughts here in the chat line. Christian Hughes writes in, RTR Bama Nation. So, Road Tide, to you, Christian, helping us out here on, a sh- on the show here on Wednesday. We're bringing this to you from the home location here in Tuscaloosa. Uh, everybody uh, helping uh, everybody here, giving that love and support to Christian. Road Tide and Rise Up with Christian RTR. Everybody's in here talking Crimson Tide football on a Wednesday. Whether it's you're looking at this Bama uh, UConn matchup coming up this weekend, whether you look at Bama football and discussing the competition on both sides of the ball, you got, of course, James Brockermeyer, who has beat out Parker Brousford at center. Brockermeyer, the former four star in the 2021 class by the way of All Saints Episcopal High School in Fort Worth, Texas. On the offensive line, I mean, uh, it takes a while to develop at that position. You very rarely see a freshman just go beast mode and start there on the offensive line, especially as, as in any position, have you. I mean, Andre Smith did it in 2006, but Andre was rare. You had Cam Robinson do it in 2014, but Cam was like rare. You know, 2016, Jonah Williams did it at right tackle, not left tackle. So, there's been some guys to do it, but more times than not, that offensive line position is one where you have to grow into and develop, and James Brockermeyer has had to grow. He's had to learn some things. He's had to mature in some spots there, but very happy to see the growth that he has made. Hell Baby TV writes in, Bama by five, Sears with a three, and Sears, Sears with a three, uh, and uh, free throws to Sierra. There we go. He's got Bama by five, Mark Sears with a big three, and then free throws to seal the deal. Okay, okay. GT18 writes in, I say by 10, Stephen, three-pointers will be huge for us. If Bama can have a three-point ball fall, and not just from Sears, if Rodlin Griffin can get hot, if Grant Nelson can give us a couple of good threes right there, he can get hot. But here's the big one. To have right sale. If right sale can get on this floor and get hot, I know he had a little injury, didn't play against North Carolina, didn't play against Clemson. He'll be back for UConn. If right sale can get hot, if he can touch that floor and scorch the floor and scorch the and scorch the net, there's a shot there to possibly win by 10. But my thing is, hey, survive, advance, get to the championship game. That's my thing. Just get to the championship game. I am the last ape with the, with the script today. There in the yellow pit there. Appreciate I am the last ape helping us out here on the show. We got roll, we got run the table sports TV right in. Steve, what's popping, bro? Red Morgan, first team reps. I'm hearing Red's tearing it up all spring. I mean, he's getting first team reps. Whether he's been working at Husky, whether he's been working with it's, it's free safety, rotate with Keon Saab. There's a lot of good things about Red Morgan. He's having a phenomenal spring, a phenomenal spring. If he doesn't start, he will be first off the bench at Husky or at free safety. Red will be first off the bench if he does not start. But that kid is having a phenomenal spring right now. Absolutely. Run the table, sports rights back, right back in. Hit that like button, y'all. Smash the like button, people. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Give us that thumbs up. Make us a part of the show. Make us a part here of your day. Let's see here. GT18 writes in. Right sale, X Factor, extra threes. He is the X Factor. And I think he's the most efficient scorer on the team. And I love Sears. Don't get me wrong. I love Sears. I love Rylan Griffin. I love Rylo. But I think right sale is the most efficient scorer on the floor. When he touched the ball, let that man pull the trigger because he touched the ball, he steps into his shots. It's effortless when he steps into his shots. And uh, he's the one guy that if he hesitates to take a shot, Nate Oates is about to pull his hair out because he's like, right, so just take it, man. Take the shot. You are the most effective, efficient shooter on the floor. Pull the trigger. So hopefully. You know, right still, when he's on the floor Saturday, he pulls the trigger. Lakeithia Williams writes in, roll, Todd, roll. Appreciate you, Lakeithia, helping us out here 
Andre Baraka writes back in, Stephen, how much has Bama football rubbed off on Bama basketball? Andre, a lot. Uh, Bama men's basketball has taken on the lank mantra of the football program. Everybody talked about, you know, Bama men's basketball. They can't do it. You know, Nate all Nate Oates lost so many assistant coaches, including uh, Antoine Petway. They lost so many great players from last year's team, including Brandon Miller. There is no way this team can make this type of a run to get deep in the tournament. There is no way. And they've taken the, the doubt. They've taken the naysay. They've taken the uh, the criticism, if you will. And this team has got on a run all the way to the Final Four. And it's been somebody different every week. Whether it's been, uh, you know, the hero of the Grand Canyon game was Diabate. The hero of North Carolina was Grant Nelson. The, the big player at, at, in the Clemson game was Sears. You know, who carries that torch against UConn. It's going to be fun to watch, but this team has taken on the mindset here of football. When you talk about that lank mentality, j Dog 67 writes in, I want to see a one-point buzzer beater, instant classic, Bama win in the Final Four. Man, j Dog 67 give us the end. Chris Stewart screaming at the top of his lungs. If that's what we're going to see, a one-point buzzer beater, by Alabama to win the Final Four, then let's get Chris Stewart screaming at the top of his lungs, which I think Chris is going to scream at the top of his lungs anyway. But the one-point buzzer beater, absolutely Chris Stewart screaming there at the top of his lungs. GT18 writes back in, Sears is our consistent shooter with right sale, Griffin, and Stevenson hitting three. It can overwhelm, it can overwhelm teams. We've seen that happen. Stevens is good also. Stevenson is really – Stevenson stepped up this past game against Clemson. What do you have, like 15 points, 15, 19 points, somewhere in there? Stevenson had a big game also. And when he's on, uh, that's another weapon. When he's on, that's another weapon. So it, it's just which player against UConn wants to help out Sears, right? Which weapon against UConn – wants to help out Sears? That's the big question. And it can be any of these guys. But which one of these guys wants to step up, take some pressure off Mark Sears, knock down some threes, get to the basket with the ball, taking it off the dribble, uh, also playing effective defense as well. Playing effective defense as well. So going to be fun here to watch this Final Four. Absolutely. But Keith the Williams writes in, I like the big man we have that can shoot and defend. Um, uh, Grant Nelson can shoot and defend. And when Grant's on, he, he's big time. And I go back to whatever Grant had for his pregame meal for North Carolina, I want him eating that same pregame meal. Do not change that. Whatever he had, I don't care if it was chicken nuggets, uh, whatever it was, give Grant that same pregame meal. Absolutely. Look, Keith the Williams writes back in, no foul trouble. That's the big one. That's the big key. You can't have the fouls. We can't have, Bama can't have the foul trouble. No fouls. No fouls in this game. If Alabama can get through this, no foul trouble. And, and, and for the critical guys, the guys like Sears, Griffin, Nelson, you cannot have the foul trouble. If Bama doesn't have foul trouble, this, this, this could be a good team. right? This, this could be a good game right here. We got Abel Kane's brother writes in. They can beat anybody when they are all shooting great, especially hitting the three. This is an Alabama team that's more than capable of running anybody out the arena when they're hitting threes. When they're hitting threes and they're making free throws, they can run anybody out the arena. We got I am the last ape. With that 199 in the Super Chats, appreciate I am the last eight riding in a row, Todd Rowe. Can't wait for A-Day. He's excited here for the A-Day game, as we all are. Uh, Burman writes in, Bama hits free threes and free throws, and it, it'll be a win. Bama knocks down threes. Uh, Bama knocks down for free throws. It will be a win here for the Crimson Tide. Jay DeGoat writes in, Grant needs to go to work on that big guy early and get him tired, make him move. Grant Nelson needs to go to work. He needs to take him off a dribble, beat him to the cup, get some easy buckets, make him come out, defend the three. 
Get that guy tired early. Get that guy in foul trouble early. That's what Grant's got to do. Get that guy in foul trouble early. If he can do that, as well as keep himself out of foul trouble and make his shots, play his role, play his game, can be really good there for Grant Nelson, can be really big there for Alabama. Continue, guys, to get your thoughts here on the show. Appreciate all of you guys checking us out on a Wednesday as we dive into topic number two of the conversation. And uh, Kane Womack is bringing uh, he's bringing elite vibes on defense. When you when you hear Womack talk, it's there's a little Kirby Smart, there's a little Jeremy Pruitt in there. I've said this before. Kane Womack is everything Nick Saban wanted Pete Golding to be, but Pete Golding never materialized into that. Womack is everything Nick Saban wanted Pete Golding to become, but Pete never materialized into that. Kane Womack is talking about, he's he's, he's breaking down the coverages Alabama's going to be in, a lot of that a lot of that high safety look, cover three to to mask it a lot. He's talking about having uh, the uh, vision-oriented coverage where you're reading the quarterback's eyes. You're not necessarily just matching pass patterns, although you will do certain things like that. You will match pass patterns, but more so than that, you're looking at the quarterback's eyes to see can you bait him, can you fool him, can you get him into making poor throws and then capitalizing off those throws, getting turnovers? And Womack and his dad, Dave Womack, one of the originators of the 4-2-5 defense, they did this a lot successfully at Ole Miss. Ole Miss, you want to talk about from 2012 to about 2016, Ole Miss's defense, believe it or not, was one of the best defenses in college football in terms of creating turnovers. But Ole Miss defense, I go back to 2013, uh, Sinquez Golson, their safety or, or defensive back, had 10 interceptions last se- that season, 2013. 10. It's crazy. 10. When Kane Womack was there as a graduate assistant, this is 2012 and 2013, Ole Miss had 28 interceptions combined uh, both of those years. So I'm just saying, Ole Miss – Running that Dave Womack, Kane Womack 425 defense was highly successful. And then 2020 at Indiana, Kane Womack as the DC there, you know, Indiana had two guys on that defense that had four picks each. And that was Jamar Johnson and his teammate, uh, first name Jalen. But Jamar Johnson, uh, both of those two guys had four interceptions apiece. So you look at this defense under Womack, he's bringing that Jeremy Pruitt, that Kirby Smart vibe where we're just going to let our athletes be athletes. We're going to let our guys beat out their guys. We're going to let our guys show their talent, show their skill set, show their playmaking ability, and we're going to have our offense throw a lot of things at our guys so that way by the time the season gets here, there is nothing that – our defense would have never seen before, right? That's going to be the biggest thing. There is nothing that our defense has never, ever seen before. And that's what's going on here in spring practice, right? Kang and DeBoer, Jamarcus Shepard, Nick Sheridan, they're throwing so much at this defense, but the way these guys are able to pick it up, adjust, bounce back, hit on a swivel, make plays, and combat what the offense is doing, just tells me Alabama's defense is going to be ready to go. I mean, these guys are going to be ready to go. And to see these young freshmen, guys like Jalen Mbakwe, guys like Xavier Brown, Xavier Mincy, Red Morgan, Drake Kirkpatrick Jr., Peyton Woodyard, right? The way these guys have taken it on because a lot's being thrown at them. Keep in mind, these kids should still be in high school getting ready for their prom, their senior prom. But they're out here on campus, early enrolled, going through spring practice with SEC caliber guys they're competing with every day. And these guys have taken it on. 
These guys, full-fledged, are growing. They're learning. They're getting better. They're seeing the mistakes that they make, and they have rectified them quickly. Kane Woman, guys, he, he's bringing this Kirby Smart, this, uh, um, uh, you know, he, he's bringing this Kirby Smart, Jeremy Pruitt type of vibe into this defense. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. My main thing is, as long as this defensive front is the type of defensive front in this 4-2-5 that can consistently harass the quarterback, that can consistently stop the run, and that can consistently put these defensive backs in a position where they can make play after play after playing the football. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Of course, spring, of course, the A-Day game, we're going to get our first look here, you know, at this 4-2-5 and how these guys are swarming to the football and 11 guys to the ball. Uh, creating plays that way. So our first look at this will be in the spring game. But I like the mentality Womack's bringing in here. I like the the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement. But most importantly, this guy's a real true teacher, real true coach, real true developer. And, and he's commanding and demanding excellence from these guys. And, and these guys are picking it up. I mean, they, they, they are picking it up. And they're picking it up fast. So I see some Kirby Smart and Kane Womack. I see some Jeremy Pruitt and Kane Womack. The main thing is, can this all come to fruition on the field? Because that's the number one thing we want to know. If, it, if this can come to fruition on the field, it makes it all the more worthwhile talking about it. But that's the main thing we want to see, is this thing come to fruition here on the field. But he is bringing that type of vibe here to this team. But – we take another break right here on the fo- on the show. Folks, don't touch that down. When we get back, we jump back into the comment section. We're taking your thoughts, getting your conversation, seeing what you guys have to say. We take another word here from our partners, Alumni Hall in Midtown Village. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah, this- Oh, gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that bam without this shirt right here, fresh polo. You gotta also rock the all paint like Kanye West right there. Keychains, gotta get you some keychains. University of Alabama keychains. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts. Shoes, sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game, you come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also, you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall. Get that gear, baby. Alumni Hall, Midtown Village here in T-Town, our great partners with Touchdown Alabama Magazine. You get your key change, your shirts, your hats, all the gear. Get yourself ready for A-Day right there at Alumni Hall. But we get back into we get back to the chat line. We get your comments here, taking your thoughts right now on the show. J Dog67 writes in. Is A Day going to be on ESPN? Yes, J Dog. This will be on live ESPN. No streaming services, no streaming networks. ESPN will have the call and we'll have the commentary team of Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, and Molly McGrath. They're on the call there. ESPN will have that. I am the last eight. Bama basketball just need to continue to play tougher than their opponent. Absolutely. Play tougher than the opponent. Survive in advance, knock down shots, play physical defense. You, you definitely want the energy. You want the effort there. Absolutely from Bama basketball. Sweet home Bama, 24. The road tie, Stephen M. Road tie to you, sweet home Bama, 24. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys helping us out here on the show. I am the last ape right knee in the Bama swarm defense. I'm telling you. Kane Womack's got some cooking here. 
Can it just come to fruition? Okay, the woman's got some cooking here, but when we see it on the field a day, and then when we see it on the field in the fall, will this be something that we can all get behind. The good news is it's something that Nick Saban's gotten behind as he's given Kane Womack his blessing to run this 4-2-5 defense. So obviously something, Saban sees something good where that is concerned. Steven Scooper writes in, we're going to see the return of the ball hogs. I'm, I'm ready for the return of the ball hogs, the no-fly zone, the giant wall of you-know-what. Like, I'm ready to see the return of all of that. I'm ready to see the return of of all of that when it comes down to Alabama football. Run the Table Sports TV writes in, Stephen, what happened to the background, bro? We want the nightclub atmosphere in here. So, so Run the Table. So, funny story. We got a new backdrop coming. It's going to have that same vibe. We got a new one coming. So, the other one, we're using that one for the studio podcast the way it is. We're using that one. We're using that background, that backdrop for the, uh, for the for the new studio podcast. But we're gonna be having a new backdrop coming real soon. That one's gonna have that same club vibe. So stay tuned for the new backdrop that's coming in soon. Once that gets here, you're not gonna miss a thing, bro. You're not gonna miss a thing. Look, Keithia Williams writes in. Oh, Mrs. Defense was knocking was knocking our heads off on the 23 game. I, I, I'll say this. I'll say this. Um, that old Miss defense that had Kane Womack and uh, uh, and uh, Dave Womack at, on that staff, you know, they were getting interceptions. They were creating turnovers. They were making plays, and that's the type of scheme that Kane is bringing over here to the Crimson Tide. Hell Baby TV writes in, defense would be great. Kane of Downs was a sure tackler. And in the right place, but he wasn't the playmaker like Minka. Kang of Downs was more so Ronnie Harrison, and Ronnie Harrison was good too. And Kang of Downs you know, will, will be missed, but you've got guys like Malachi Moore, you got guys like Keon Saab, you've got guys like Devontae Smith, you've got guys like Tony Mitchell that will fill that void very, very well. You got I am the last eight. Bama is going to be an intense football team. Yes, it will be. Bama's going to be an intense football team this season coming off a loss in the Rose Bowl to Michigan. Let's see here. Steven Scuba writes in, definitely don't want to see a safety lead the team in tackles. You don't want to see that. You more so want to put your line. You also want to have your linebackers lead the team in tackles and definitely got to get back to that. Got to get back to having that linebacker position lead your team in tackles. And Kane Womack will put that in perspective. GT18. Stephen, I like the fact that Nick approved of the new defensive format. I think he said they were trying to get back to that. I see it being multiple schemes, especially in the secondary. Saban was trying to get back to it. He was trying to get back to the 4-2-5. So seeing how he has given the blessing to Kane Womack to run what he wants to run, I'm excited about this. I'm really excited about this. Uh, Steven Scooper writes in, DeBoer put together the type of staff Nick wanted. He really did. Kalen DeBoer really put together a dynamic staff. And people wondered, could DeBoer recruit? He, he can recruit. Could DeBoer put together a, an outstanding staff that he has? So he's got people really excited to see what this team will look like on a day, but more importantly, what they will look like in the upcoming season in the fall. Let's see. Christian Hughes writes in, Stephen M., do you think Devontae Smith will be starting? I see him starting, Christian, at that Husky position in nickel. Uh, he, he'll start at Husky. He'll be the Husky back at that nickel position right there in Kane Womack's defense. It's that nickel corner. He'll be tagged to do a whole lot. Let's see. Run the table sports TV. I can't wait to see the boys getting down. So it's gonna be good, man. Gonna be good, gonna be good, gonna be good. Ephraim Davis writes in. What's up, Steven? Road tie, road tie to you, Ephraim. Happy to have you in here. My man DP Don Parker in the building. Road tie, everybody. Appreciate you, Don, helping us out here on the show. We got here 
Dixon Butts writes in, I know we need people in Tuscaloosa for a day, but I hope we can also show support for the Birmingham Stallions, Stallions home opener too. Support the Stallions. Support the Birmingham Stallions, the two-time USFL, now, of course, UFL champion. Support the Birmingham Stallions. I got to see if I can get to some, some of these games myself here. Definitely support the Stallions. Appreciate Dixon Butts writing that in there. We got Ephraim Davis writes in, they simplified the defense. They did. Kane Womack has simplified this defense to where they're not putting a lot on everybody. They're giving these players small assignments, and based on how they handle those small assignments, then they grow them. So doing a great job there, not putting a lot on these guys just right out of the gate here. We got Don Parker writes back in. I am curious about how things are going to go on a day. However, as far as, as how, however, as far as I'm concerned, the jury will still be out on this team until we see how they perform in the season. And that's fair. That's fair. I mean, the jury will always be outdone on this team until we see how they do on the field in the fall. Like a day is a formality, right? A day is just for fun. It's just for kicks. It's for the fans to catch up with old friends, old colleagues, family members. But in the fall is where the action happens. In the fall is when you get down to, to the nitty gritty. In the fall is where it means something. So absolutely, people will still have their thoughts about this team reserved until we get out there in the fall. Shouts out to my man Jason Haywood with that $5 donation. Appreciate that, Jason. He writes in, how is Jeremiah Beeman progressing on the D-line, and when could we see him in action? Jeremiah Beeman's progressing well on that defensive line. He's making plays, getting after guys, you know, a leader in that room. When can we see him in action? You'll definitely see Beeman at A-Day. He'll get in that rotation. As far as in the coming fall, he'll get some action. How much remains to be seen because you're so deep there. I'm a defensive line, but a guy that does have a big play skill set there in terms of uh, Jeremiah Beeman. Let's see here. Andre Baraka writes in, Stephen, why does it seem people are putting down what Saban has done with the seriousness, political, all business way of getting things done? It got us six titles. I don't know why. I mean, Saban had his way, and it did work. It worked. Everybody's different. Saban had his philosophy, tough, business-minded, no nonsense, serious, no all business. Saban had his way, and it worked. Six national championships. It's just, I don't know why people are putting him down like that. I don't, I don't get that. I mean, DeBoer is coming in. He's a bit more open. He's got more of an open-door policy. He's a bit more of one to provide access. But that's his way, Right. That's his philosophy, and we will see how his philosophy goes this season to start off. But everybody has their own way of doing things. So Nick Saban did things his way it worked. We'll see what how Kalen DeBoer's aspect works here. Let's see, Christian Hughes writes in, I want the offensive line to dominate again. Offensive line, Christian Hughes, the interior is good. The interior is really good, but the, but the tackles, you got to get those tackles straight. Whether it's Elijah Pritchett, whether it's Miles McVay, whether it's Wilkin Formby, whether it's Nikhil Betrand, whether it's uh, Caden Proctor finally putting his name officially in the portal and coming to Alabama. He hasn't officially put his name in the portal just yet. So, I mean, I like the, the interior guys, but the exterior of the tackles, they got to get that stuff right. They got to get that right there. Brandon Easterwood writes in, Stephen, who do you think, who do you see securing? The punt return duties to start with seems like we have a plethora of, uh, of agile athletes to choose from. I would like to see, and I see this guy, Jalen Mbakwe. He played, he returned punts in high school at Clay Chalkfield. Just an explosive guy. I would like to see Jalen Mbakwe return punts this season. That's the name. Now, of course, Kendrick Law can do it. Uh, Jaron Hamilton can do it. Cole Adams can do it. Jeremy Bernard can do it, but I would like to see Jalen Mbakwe, the freshman from Clay Chalkfield, former five-star, I would like to see him as the one returning punts. That's just me. And if he goes out there and he does that, 
and he excels and, and creates that type of excitement that we want to see, then, then, then big ups to him uh, for doing that. But that's the guy I want to see, Jalen Mbakwe. But we get into kind of the final topic here of conversation, folks, on the show, and it goes to that wide receiver room for Alabama, uh, as many guys as in that room. It looks like Kobe Prentice, young man from Calera High School here in Alabama who came in that 2022 class, looks like Kobe Prentice is emerging as wide receiver one, best route runner on the team. Uh, he had this insane one-handed catch in practice the other day. I was caught on video and put on Alabama's Instagram. Uh, I mean, here's a guy that he's, he's a speedster. He's a route runner. He's a playmaker. He's caught 49 passes in two years, uh, 651 yards, four touchdowns uh, across two seasons. A guy that has playmaker written all on him. Uh, one of the leaders here in this room, uh, I, I think he, he is rising as wide receiver one. Now, I like Kendrick Law. You're going to have to give Kendrick Law the ball about 10 to 15 times a game because he's a Debo Samuel type. I think Caleb Odom is a stud at 6'5". He's going to bring back the physical big body receiver that pans out for Alabama. Odom's going to bring that back. I like Emmanuel Henderson, his growth, his maturity, how much he's improved and gotten better. But when I look at Kobe Prentice, I just see routes, hands, speed, tactician, concepts, really like Kobe Prentice. I think he's the, I think he's wide receiver one. And I remember Mike McCoy, the uh, uh, founder, owner of Maximum Performance Institute out of Birmingham, you know, former Alabama wide receiver, former you know, 2009 BCS national champion. Mike McCoy mentioned how he saw Prentice as elite. You no, know, he saw Prentice as that dude. He saw Prentice as the next you no know, big time marquee playmaker here in this Alabama wide receiver room. So anything that Mike McCoy puts down as a, he thinks that's going to happen. You know, I take anything that Mike McCoy says to heart because he he does the studying. He, he's around these guys. He's around these athletes. He played the position, won a national championship in Alabama. So I, I like what he, you know, brings here to the table. But, but, but we're going to, we, we're going to, we, we got a couple of super chats to get to right now. We got some things rolling in here. Rolling in here, we got my man Dale B with that twenty dollar donation. Appreciate Dale B with a roll tide, Steven Dale B. I appreciate you, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Don Parker DP right here with that five dollar donation. Appreciate you, Don. He says thank you for this version of in my own words. I'm loving the fan interaction. Any news on Keon Keeley's progress? Thank you, Stephen. Keon Keeley's been he's been doing well out there. Been doing well, coached up hard by Freddie Roach and Jamie Mosley. Um, Kane Womack wants Keon Ely as one of those bandit players. Keeley's going to be one of those bandit players on the defensive line. Freddie Roach said it. We're going to turn Keeley loose and let him go after the quarterback. We're going to turn that big boy loose and then go off the quarterback. Freddie Roach mentioned this early in spring ball. Kane Womack mentioned early in spring ball. Hey, this guy Keeley, as a defensive lineman, he's going to be one of those bandit guys. He's got this freakish body frame. We want him getting after the quarterback. And I feel like once he, I feel like once he truly, once Keeley truly knocks all the way in, to what his assignment is, oh gosh, he, he's going to be an animal. That kid's going to be an animal. My guy, Coach Smoke, with the strong emoji. All right, Coach Smoke, I saw you out there getting them coaches today. Appreciate Coach Smoke here joining us here on the live. Everybody, get everybody got uh, Smoke in here. Appreciate Smoke there. Smoke also writes in. Good to see you today, Steve. And absolutely, Smoke man, it was good to see you also. It was great to see you all. So and this is where it all started for, for everybody. This is where it all started for everybody. Proud of Co proud of you, Smook, what you've been doing, man. Getting that Alabama football coverage. Smook is doing his thing and 100% proud of him. Just 100% proud of him. But, folks, I mean, Kobe Prentice, to me, 
I think he's wide receiver one. You got you got you have you have a whole excellent group of receivers. You got route runners. You got big body guys like King of Bodum. You got guys that can do some of anything like everything like Kendrick Law. You've got guys like Emmanuel Henderson that have greatly improved. Uh, you just got pick your poison. You got so many different skill sets at the wide receiver position, and Jamarcus Shepard wants to get them all on the field. That's the main thing. Coach Shep wants to get all of these guys on the field. But I feel like Kobe Prentice of the group, he's the leader of the group. He has he's the best routes, best hands, technically sound Kobe Prentice. He, he is that guy right there. So looking forward to seeing what he does in the spring game coming up, what he does uh, throughout spring ball here. But really excited about what Kobe Prince is going to do and what this entire wide receiver room is going to do. But folks, that's going to do it here on this edition of In My Own Words, hottest show on the streets here, giving you your Bama football news. We got a chance to get into the competition. That's been good on both sides, the ball offensively and defensively. Got a chance to look at Kane Womack, the elite vibes he's bringing to the table from a coordinator standpoint. And then Kobe Prince is rising here as wide receiver one. As always, folks, you can get you can get all the entertainment, the news, the action, the updates here on your favorite program. That being tied football by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you got the Android phone for your audio needs. We got your iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast Audio FM, or iHeartRadio. We got you covered right there. The good and gracious Lord sees fit. I look to be back on Friday, continuing the conversation that is Bama football. I want to thank all of you, the Bama fans, for the chat and the YouTube chat and I, all the donations. You guys rocking with us on tonight's show on a Wednesday. Appreciate every last one of you guys for making this your spot here for all things Thai football. Until next time, folks, you guys have a great evening. Have a great night, Tuscaloosa. You've been listening to In My Own Words.